a very warm welcome to all of you to another lecture in this series on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. So, in the last lecture we had uh, seen this figure and we had talked about fading. So, we see that uh, multiple copies of the same signal arrive at the receiver and uh, we want to obviously there is added noise this was without added noise. So, we want to now receive the signal. So, now in order to receive the signal we need to have a model for these H k's. So, let us discuss that first let us discuss a very simple model and consider that uh, all these reflection coefficients. So, h 1, h 2, h 3 all of them are static in time or uh, they are time invariant 1 and 2 and assume simultaneous arrival. So, simultaneous arrival means that all the copies of the transmitted signal arrive at lags whose differences are small enough to consider that they have arrived at the same time and hence we can write the summation of h k as h. Now, h is this, this is h, this is the received signal. So, the magnitude of the received signal and this is the phase of the received signal. Naturally, this can be written as h equals summation of h i k plus j h q k, k goes from 1 to k because all of these are complex numbers fine. And another thing that uh, we must say over here that, so let us add a slide before we continue. Let us add a slide saying that these are independent vectors, these are independent vectors fine. So, since these are independent vectors h equals summation over k h i k plus j this piece and this thing this is sum of independent complex numbers this is sum of independent complex numbers hence we can use the central limit theorem and so this is for now we assume it to be 0 0 1, but uh, this is normalized. So, so there is something called slow fading as well that uh, we should take into account, but uh, right now we will not talk about that. So, this this is H is complex. So, let me use the correct expression beta Gaussian 0 mean with a variance beta. Beta is generally the simplest form of beta that we define is minimum of 1 and d by d naught to the power minus eta. Here eta is known 
as the propagation exponent and generally for most purposes we take it to be 3.6 in a, in an urban setting d is the between transmitter and receiver d not is known as the reference d not is known as the reference distance fine so because of this now h is complex gaussian hence this is zero mean or this is this has an envelope that is really distributed and a uniformly and a uniformly distributed phase this has uh, two sources of noise so now the received signal if you look at it hst plus wt this has two sources of noise additive noise and multiplicative noise we have additive noise and multiplicative noise and this is there now the question is that how do we simulate this we have actually simulated uh, while simulating that uh, non coherent detection part we have actually simulated this to some extent let us look at the steps for simulation. We assume the availability of the channel state information. How to acquire this is a separate question. We will deal with that and generate one realization of uh, multiplicated noise, simulate for additive noise, average over multiple realizations. So, we have both the approaches ready with us or we have codes for both the approaches ready with us. So, let us quickly run those and see what happens. Yes, we have codes for both the approaches ready with us. So, let us quickly run them and see what happens. So, semi log y this and the other one was QAM example, yeah, multi dimensional non coherent. This is, no, oh, this was multi dimension was not, we had QAM example only. Yes, so QAM example this was there and this was a random phase. So, this random phase I will replace this with a 0 mean circular symmetric complex Gaussian. So, let us say g equals square root of 0 0.5 times this. So, this is there and let me run this. So, let us start with BPSK simple case and let me start with assuming the knowledge of the received simple vector. So, there are two ways I can multiply y with the complex conjugate of g as well that will also work, but so let us run this and see what happens. So, that, oh, this is there, this goes here and it has to be semi log y, run again and this should not take long 1. 2, 3, 4, done. So, 
So, this is it and this varies close to 1 over SNR. The performance is close to 1 over SNR. So, we keep this in mind. Let us repeat this for QPSK. Let us repeat this for QPSK and see what happens. And this is for QPSK, you see there is a uniform gap or to be precise, so 10 to the power minus 1 is a 1.5 dB gap and then, so there is a 1.5 dB gap and this is for BPSK and QPSK. Again, if you do not assume the phase information to be known, you will be in trouble, fine. So, this is the performance of BPSK and QPSK in case of Rayleigh fading. So, now the question is that uh, the channel coefficient is required. Now, we have to know the channel state information. So, the availability this G or H because we called it G in the simulation and H here. So, this H I will correct the code or the channel coefficient. and knowledge is assumed right now. So, we have assumed the uh, knowledge about uh, G or H whatever with us, but uh, misinformation in this regard can be proved disastrous and uh, we need to learn the channel coefficients. So, the way to do this is form. So, send pilots or known signals and form an estimate of the channel coefficient and uh, mostly this is the MMSC estimate known or MMSC estimate that is the minimum mean squared error estimate. So, from this point onwards the focus of this course will be mostly in reducing ideas rather than solving for exact equations or uh, solving for those. So, we form an estimate. How do we do that is uh, possibly left to a course on wireless communications or a follow up uh, simulation course dealing with wireless communication channels. And the question is that uh, how do we form this estimate effectively? So, the point to note is that the time that we spend in sending pilots and learning channel is time where we do not transmit data. So, we do not transmit data and hence that time the channel uses are actually being used for not for data transmission, but for something else. So, that time is essentially wasted. So, we want to do this channel estimation as quickly as possible, fine. So, that said we come on to the multi tap channel which was one simplifying assumption that we considered. So, let us remove that simplifying assumption. We say that the copies of signals, copies of the transmitted signal arrive over multiple bins or we receive multiple copies of the transmitted signal. It is easy to observe that in this case the received signal y n is nothing but uh, 
so this can be written as y n equals the convolution of h n and s n and noise y n is the convolution of h n and s n and noise and the channel behaves like an finite or FIR filter or a finite impulse response filter and hence this has a non-flat response, this has a non-flat frequency response. What this means in the time domain now or we also see that y n depends on the past signals as well y n depends on the past signals as well fine. So, since y n depends on the past signals as well as present signals we say that y n is h k this plus w n. Now, y n is this and the channel behaves like an FIR filter. So, the past symbols we sent end up interfering present symbols these past symbols end up interfering with the present symbols and this phenomenon is known as inter symbol interference or ISI this phenomenon is known as inter symbol interference or ISI fine. So, let us now remove another simplifying assumption. So, let us remove another simplifying assumption of the channel remaining fixed in time. We say that the channel no longer remains fixed in time. So, the channel impulse response is given by this h n k and the channel is called a doubly selective channel with two variables time and lag. So, the channel has two time variables time and lag. So, this is time at which transmit and this is the lag at which the signal is received. So, y n equals h n k s n minus k, k goes from 1 to n plus w n. The response of the, so h n k response of the channel at time n to a signal that was sent at n minus k fine. So, this and this is called a doubly selective channel and has two time variables time and lag and if we take the Fourier transform across uh, time or the time variable we get uh, so this operation denotes a Fourier transform. So, if we take a Fourier transform across time then we get a time or we get what we go in from the time domain to the what is known as the Doppler domain. If we 
go from this k to or if we take the Fourier transform across k, we go from lag to frequency or delay to fre frequency and so the ch channel can be represented using four functions, the time lag or the time delay, the delay Doppler or the Doppler delay, the Doppler and frequency and the time and frequency modes. So, based on this we have some jargon for a wireless communications channel. The delay spread is a time difference between the first and last copy of the symbol which corresponds to the length of the finite impulse response filter of the channel. The coherence bandwidth since this is an FIR filter, so an FIR filter has a non-flat frequency response. So, the coherence bandwidth is the bandwidth for which the channel frequency response can be as to assumed to be constant. The coherence time is the time for which a time varying channel can be assumed to be constant. The Doppler spread is the spread of the frequencies introduced due to time variation in the channel, fine. So, these are some terms that are associated with the wireless channel and this results in inter symbol interference. All the symbols are smudged over one another and they are no longer nicely defined fine points from a constellation. So, this for now this is the end of this course, but uh, if at all time permits and we have uh, space for another couple of lectures once the files are processed and all. So, then we will talk about uh, simulating these wireless communication channels, but right now or for now this is uh, all we had to offer in this course. The details of wireless communication channels and the solutions that uh, to these problems will be the subject of a follow up course. So, thank you.